So is that good? Hmm? Hmm? I don't know. Welcome up to the hop reel. All right. Welcome up to the hopper. This is uh, 0001. We're going to do two things. Look at some little programs and talk about some big life. I don't know. This is the thing I'm, I've committed to. First, we got an uh, imaginary sponsor. Great imaginary sponsor. It's called uh, Donkey Downy. Donkey Downy is... If you're looking for a watery coffee from a intermittently and unpredictably begrudging South Asian, in this case, woman, Donkey Downey, great, great for that. America skins their knee running towards Donkey Downey. Also, you can get, while supplies last, uh, our special drink, The Hopper. It's just a regular ass uh, black iced coffee, but it's a little bit more watery than usual. It's because they, they let the, the ice melt in there. So it's a little bit more, it's a special kind of watery. So that's uh, Dunky Downy. I think that's my current brand strategy is that I'm going to, I'm going to neg, I'm going to neg the brands that I would like to sponsor me until they actually do. Okay, so we're going to talk about small programs. What does that mean? Small preparatory programs that I was working on in preparation for this. So this is the, if you remember from the last episode, I did, I will, this is a uh, not publicly viewable, this is the bumper from my reel, right? So I just, I did this, uh, I'll let it play one more time, right? Um, he did this. This was with the cloud drawing app that we were talking about. I think I may have, without thinking about it, referred to it as a circle drawer. But whatever, it's cool. You know what I'm talking about. I made that. I, I guess I'll link the unlisted version of the current, my current reel until I do the kind of full, full one. Uh, heads up, I, it's summertime. Uh, and then I also have leave for my job. If there's any, uh, Freelance stuff, animation ones you you are interested in doing. Get at me. So I did that the way, and then the way I did that it was straight up just. It was uh, like with these. It was just a series of screen. It was just one long screen recording. Um, that I I just I cut it up and time remapped it. So one thing it would be cool eventually is to have an interface where I can, I guess, if I could export PNG sequences, that would be super chill because then the issue with this was I just had to kind of live with, I think I, I forgot what blending mode I used to get them closer together, but I had to do some blending mode stuff to get them closer together and then I didn't have, and then that complicated this glowing thing. Which was with some, uh, I forgot what I, I, I think I just did a color overlay or something like this. Maybe that's slightly more complicated. So doing this reminded me that I would like to have something where I could control the color of the actual, I should just add a color option for the, the brush and or be able to change the color of the shape post facto. And then I would like it such that the other shapes keep rotating after they are drawn. Right now, they are not saved as objects. I, I've saved the array of points, but I've not saved like each kind of, uh, each each total kind of shape, and I've not shaved, saved each like stamp as an individual object. I would need to do like a, a class or something like this. Okay, so th th that was where it ended up, and these are, I'm thinking about improvements that I would like to make. So I'm starting to make them. One of the things I believe I talked about was adding a rotation with the mouse. To do that, I was using ArcTangent 2. This is me trying to talk to ChatGPT to understand what the issue was. So I asked it to do the, um, I think this is, I remember doing this in trigonometry. So this is, uh, how do you call, um, 
like the table for the unit circle when y is one value and x is one another value. So you can see this is me just trying to use arctangent two. Where is it? Uh, rotate arctangent two, and then I'm just moving, <clears throat> moving the origin to where the mouse is, and then arctangent two is it's two points. I had to add ninety. Uh, for whatever reason, and then it's it's the delta between mouse x, the, the current and previous mouse position. Uh, and then if I do this, if I do it fast, you can see it's working. But as you can imagine, if I move slowly, I get these, uh, this like jittering that's about, looks like at least 45 degrees to 90 degrees. So th this is due to the fact that sometimes the delta between the previous and the current point is it's between zero and one, and you get these, where if they're both one, then it's 45 degrees, and if one is zero, one is uh, one, you get this delineation between zero and 90, right? So that, that was producing that. So I remember, if you remember, I mentioned that I ported a program by accident to P5JS. This was a program that I made in, in regular processing, and I remember thinking, okay, this works, this appears to work, I don't see any weird errors. You know, there's some stuff with like, a, what it's interpreting as the mouse speed to get the thickness. This is just creating, it's just creating two lines that are, uh, the separation between those lines is rotated around what it surmises is the uh, angle of the mouse. And the distance is based on the, the distance or the, you know, what it thinks is the speed between the, uh, the previous one. So it, it changes with speed, right? Sometimes you get some errors, and there's no, I've done no smoothing or anything like this, so sometimes you get a little bit of uh, jankiness, and uh, I mean, I, I'm fine with it, or I was fine with it. So I remember thinking, I was, I was doing that program that was not working, and I was thinking, why is this not working? Hmm, uh, I remember this program working, so I actually just copy pasted that into ChatGPT, and then it gave me this, right? So I was looking at that and I was thinking, okay, it's, uh, where is it? It's arctangent two, my dude. So I was asking ChatGPT and uh, I was getting stuff like, I was trying to do stuff like smooth, adding like average between the values to kind of smooth it out, which was smoothing it out when it wasn't changing the underlying issue. And then um, I, I was trying to do something where I would change the, so that there wasn't, it wouldn't process the rotation unless the delta was more than one or, you know, one in, in either axis. I, I don't remember how I was doing that, but however I was doing it was too fast and excited and it wasn't, I was too fast in trying to change it and I, I, whatever I did was not working. So the thing I was trying to do was looking at like, this appears to work. The thing is this, it appears to work because uh, when the mouse speed is what it understands to be one or zero, the actual thickness of the, what appears to be a stroke is one or zero. So you see this is, this is still producing these weird errors, right? Like if we draw faster again, things look appear to be fine, but we get the same errors. If we increase the, um, the base, how do you say, uh, width between the, uh, between the two points. So that, that also doesn't solve the underlying issue, just appears, it lessens the appearance of it because uh, how it's processing the information. So I did that, and then I was thinking, kept thinking, I, was, I think I just started searching Google, searching Google, and I came across this thing called Erratic Generator. This person hasn't posted since, does it say who they are? Hi, I'm Erratic Generator. Uh, I didn't say who, just, that's just that. So um, they posted a bunch of stuff on here, and then one of them was this fixed distance between brushes in P5JS. So I will link this in the show notes. I'll link this in the show notes, but it kind of, it goes through sequentially about building this little program, which is cool. It uses vectors. So vectors are a, if there's like a static vector in here and um, it's a processing uh, object, a class, right? So the class has some stuff embedded within it. It has something called, yeah, it has all these other, sorry, distance. It has, uh, 
normalize. You can do all this like vector math on different vectors. Like you can subtract them and multiply them. The thing I was looking for was, where does it show you the heading? It has a thing called heading. It just, it do, does a version of the, the, the rotation that we're doing now, right? So again, th this doesn't inherently solve the problem. The thing that solved the problem was, was this. So I don't know what kind of, so right, this I would say appears to work to me, appears to work to me, right? So the cool thing that this person did is this. So it has this thing called threshold, right? And then it waits until, let's just make a really big one just for sake of example. So if we make the threshold really big, right? It won't draw another shape unless we've passed the threshold. So for this, this kind of looks not great, obviously, but if we make it uh, 10, you can see that, you know, it, it appears to work as we're never going below, uh, at or below one. So if we, if we do make it one, I think one will cause it to, right? So now it's, it's doing a version of, you can see that jitter that was happening. Even that is reduced though. So if, if how far, if we go to two, it looks fine to me. I don't see any jittering errors. Uh, I mean, that's very tight, but. So there's that, right? So there's that. So we got rotation towards the mouse working in this, uh, the thing I, I'm doing is like having these small programs and then uh, applying them to the bigger program in case I blow something up. So the other thing I did was lerping, adding lerp, p5js. So this is just in uh, pro processing and p5js, lerping. Right, is this. So the, the issue that we were having is if we have a vast delta between the mouse points, right? Uh, we will get these, uh, what do you want to call it? Let's, let's call them undesirable gaps in the line, right? So the thing we want to do, and I, I believe this is akin to how, um, at least the last time I was looking at it, really finally editing brushes in Photoshop. Uh, it's my understanding that this is how the brushes work. That they're, I forget what the, uh, there's some parameters you can change. One of them is like, I don't know, it's like how many spaces, how much space between each uh, component of the stroke, right? So so this is, pretend these, this is a line, a longer segment of lines, right? We can control how many uh, points we see between the actual lines, right? So the other thing was this. We can control having like two points have the same always amount of points uh, or uh, you know intermediary points between them, right? Equidistant. The, th the thing is equidistant, right? So that's, that's what's really uh, helpful. Is equidistant, uh, the thing we can do is uh, we can also modify it. I think it's just it's always going to, uh, it's going to recalculate the, how lerped, how, how lerped the line segment is. So it'll, it'll appear to be the same density of points. It won't, it won't, they won't get closer together. So I don't know. I, I think this is actually what I want, what I want, but the other one, I don't know, for some reason it looks cooler. Or, so I just made this little program just to test out lerping and I just tried to make it kind of not totally suck. Uh, so that's another thing I'm going to be incorporating into the cloud drawer. The last thing was, uh, I forgot how I had this set up, is to have the uh, strokes be able to rewind in a non-linear way. Uh, by that mean multiple point where I press the, right? So this is two points. The stroke is rewinding. And what I would like to be able to do is ask them stuff like how fast the kind of playback is. 
right? Because I, I think if we're doing something like that bumper, we're going to want something that's very, very, ultimately very quick. So if we could, you know, process like, I don't know, 10 frames, 10 uh, array points per frame, probably something like what we need to do. If we're thinking back about this video, right, we're, we would want it to be able to uh, undraw itself at the end or perhaps draw itself in if we have these saved in a file, like a JSON file or something like this. To have it uh, undraw itself, that would be cool. I think it would be per perhaps, perhaps subtler uh, than we'd like, but I think it would be really uh, add something to this, right? So those are the, the little programs. I wanted to talk about one more thing. I've been doing these, I don't know if you, you would want to call them bad. I'm calling them, in my head I call them bad. Um, Multi-axis uh, variable typefaces, right? And then the issue that I was having, at first it was like the direction of where the checkers were going. The issue that I'm having is uh, I solved it with the O, I fixed it with the O, but now if you see this, you can see the something's going on here. This might be a, an issue of which points I selected. You know, the, the checkers appear, they look kind of like they're rotating in like a three-dimensional way, which is not what we're looking for. I think this is just, I had the point where we're wrong. All right, so this is the thing we would like to fix eventually. And uh, the I discovered this thing called intermediate, intermediate layers in, uh, and this is in glyphs, right? I don't, I don't know if Robofont has this. I presume it has some version of this. So this is, the, the example they give is that you want, it's like the interpolation between uh, the crossbar of the E, if we look at it, it appears to be pretty thin here, right? Uh, this is this is presented as an undesirable thing, right? Um, and then this E, let's like zoom in. This E, is uh, much more even, like the, the, the crossbars appear to interpolate in a much more even way. This is considered better, gooder, right? So this is achieved through what's called uh, intermediate layers. You can just create a layer in um, glyphs, and then you can change what point on the axes it's supposed to be, and then you draw it at that point. So. This is this is the real application for this uh, to uh, improve the interpolation in a way that improves the idea, you know, the the, uh, the follow through of the idea through uh, all your masters uh, or, or all as many points along the the axes as possible. That's what you're supposed to do with it. But the thing I was thinking about is the possibilities. After this is a thing I have to just think about more possibilities of what you could do, right? So th this is not good. This is just a very rudimentary test I made, um, right? So this is an E and then it, it, the end state is super long, right? So in any other context, there's not really a ton of options that one could perceive of from going from this narrow E to this wide E, right? It's just going to interpolate this as going uh, horizontally. Right in, in any other normal circumstances. But what I did was I created this uh, uh, intermediate layer here, intermediate layer here, and then another one here. So you get this animation, right? So this is, again, not what you're supposed to do in terms of like, is this a usable state? Is this a usable state? Is this, you know, like in, in theory, the, the spectrum, the axis, uh, moves along should be something that is uh, usable, right? Or, or it's as, as a, a spectrum of thick to thin that is, has some utility, right? We're not doing that. The thing I was thinking about is this kind of possibility for animation. So in After Effects, you could just like create outlines of an E and you could do this, right? You could do this. So that's the thing I'm like, but why though? Uh, I feel like there's something there, and I haven't cracked the surface yet. So uh, stay tuned. I, I don't know. So, um, right, if we speed it. The other thing you might notice is that you can, you can put these anywhere 
along. So there's there's no uh, interpol. I think you can change the interpolation. There's no interpolation change here. Uh, you can put these intermediate layers anywhere you desire along whatever points on the axis you want. So you can notice that this looks, this appears to be non-linear, right? It appears to be, I don't know, there's like, it, it eases out a little bit and it eases in a little bit. The, the other, the thing I, I, would, I would be interested in or I'm thinking about is if you could define, if you could programmatically define all the layer states and you could do them like, I don't know, like 24 of them along an axis of this one is of, of 12,000, right? If you, maybe it's like it goes to 2400 and then you can have, tw you know, increments of 100. So it's just e the math is easier or more cleaner. But if you could programmatically define the layers, the intermediate layers, that would be an interesting thing and like what that could mean or what they could do. So it might be, I don't know, or it might be something where it, I would probably start something easy, like maybe something like you're familiar with uh, purple haze. This isn't easy, but uh, uh, nope, nope. Uh, pur purple haze is just circles, right? Purple haze is a type of it's just circles. However, they're in opposite uh, directions, the paths, so it creates this uh, psychedelic, psychedelic uh, effect, right? When the paths uh, overlap each other, right? So I'm thinking of something like akin to this where uh, maybe it, it changes just the it could just be a bunch of circles or, or, or geometric shapes and then like it's programmatically changing the points along the axis and what you could do with that I don't know you could also I don't know I also just I was doing this I was getting right this is the same thing where it's going from thin to wide or did I say thick to thin right before uh, narrow to wider but I created these more like uh to see how they would uh, more absurd different interpolation points to see how they would interpolate. So is that good? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but I think the possibilities feel very uh, tumescent. The possibilities feel tumescent. Right, so th those are the uh, small programs I made. They're kind of like, I'm thinking about them like uh, purportory sketches. Purportory sketches. Uh, for for the larger thing, the larger painting, which is the cloud drawer application. So the other th the thing I wanted to talk about that is not that is not that a nerd thing intrinsically is um, what's been happening, right? So I haven't posted. I, I think partially I'm doing this just to kind of get a hold on time passing since 2020. Time passing since 2020 has been super strange i imagine some of this is just the thing that happens as you uh age however um certain things that happened to be 10 years ago are not making sense to me so this was something i posted i posted this january 1st 2020 and it was like ready for the new year dude it's gonna be great and then uh you know when i was last posting on this channel uh with any sense of regularity um, I was, this was the last major, I think I unlisted, there's some just like live streams I unlisted. It was this stuff about making music with the uh, Super Nintendo, right? Oh, there's no cam. There's not, I don't know what happened with my cam. What happened with my cam, dude? Right, so this was, I was, this was in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, this is a, a different computer. I had all these other, I was still using coding, code blocks for code blocks. For uh, open frameworks, and uh, I don't even know what this like Lotus thing is. I don't even know what that is. It might be a video compression uh, software. Is that Swords and Squeeze? End of life. No, it is Swords and Squeeze. Why did I have Swords and Squeeze on here at this point? I don't know. I had Sorens and Squeeze in 2015. So anyway, so, uh, you know, this is a different time as the, the point I'm trying to make. Sorens and Squeeze, uh, I forgot even what this emulator is called. So this Iganjo, that's some like, uh, I forgot what the name of it was. That was 2015. What was happening in 2015 for me? I was in graduate school. 
I was in graduate school at uh, the Cranbrook Academy of Art. Shout out to Sir Elliot commented on my last video saying, he commented twice. Shout out, dude. <laughs> Elliot commented twice. So I was like, uh, it's cool that you're posting again. Uh, so, shout out. I, I took this out of storage the other day. Hell yeah, dude. I want to get a bust. Whenever you were making busts, dude. Um, I took that out of storage because I didn't, in my uh, old apartment, I straight up didn't have a place to put it. So I was in the Cranbrook Academy of Art in the 2D department. If you're interested who I'm talking about, I'm talking to a, a person who I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm making a video on the internet to talk to one person. Uh, if you look at, if you go to the channel, Studio Practice, this is who I'm talking about, Elliot Earls, uh, who, sorry, the Jimmy Neutron here, <laughs> threw me off, dude. Uh, this is, he, he is the artist in residence in the 2D department, and dude, fucking, Henry's blowing up. I don't know. I, I don't understand what this thing is. It's like all his posts are dark academia hashtag. And they're like, like very melodramatic poems about dying in a war or something. Uh, I don't get it. It's working for him. Great. No hate. Um, no, I'm just, uh, I think I just don't understand the internet. At the point. But shout, shout out to Henry. Shout out to, if you're interested in, uh, I think a good video would be, I don't remember how long. This is one of those time, one of those time things. I think this was uh, middle 2020. A truly, <laughs> a truly bizarre design cult. This video is so good. It's who, it was a workshop they did, they did with, who was there? It was... Oh yeah, Ramon Tejada was there. Eric Internet, what's his actual name? I know him as Eric Internet. Eric Carter. Nicole Killian, Peter Shahalski. Uh, and then forgive me, I don't know Mary Ponce. And Brianne Trammell. Everything looked cool. I just don't I I'm bad at if it's a if these are famous design people and I'm stupid. I I take the L on that. Um so this looks so cool. There was, what was that like? There's like a trust exercise or something. I don't look so cool, dude. Uh, and I think that's a good video if, you, if you're just looking. I don't know what the temperature is like there at this exact moment. Uh, sir, there's been some change. I don't know. You know, I don't actually. I saw a picture from graduation and the, the artists in residence are different. Um, things that have affected higher education in general have affected Cranbrook. And then uh, like both COVID and um, I know there was some stuff with uh, related to Palestinian flags and studios that was uh, I don't know the exact tenor or, or the exact sequence of events that happened but it was a concerning thing anyway um, so this is one like work I was making uh, some work I was making there um, this is this is my thesis piece this is my thesis piece this is in the county. Uh, so it was related to this performance. So that was, uh, for some reason, I wanted to not, to stop, like, talking about it in English. I don't know. Uh, so uh, it was these, it was, it's a constructed language, a sequence of a bunch of music videos. And then there was, it was this, like, modified broom that was a guitar. And then this, like, uh, uh, how do you say? Paper mache, not paper. What is it? Is it yeah. Pinata style uh, guitar. Right, so this is a performance that I did. Um, it's about a half an hour. Uh, so I'm speaking a language that is not English that I made up called Spondy. Um, so this is this is the state of contemporary art, dude. This is the state of contemporary art, dude. I got an award for this, right? So I got an award for this, and I don't even know if they still do this. I don't know if there's concerns with. I don't know what the relationship with Mercedes-Benz is right now with the school or in general or if they still are paying for this stuff. They, uh, I think that they did a thing where they, rather than giving it to one person, 
they would give it to like every all the one person from each department and it was like a much smaller award i i this, uh, i don't i actually don't know to see what has happened with the award it was weird because it's a very non-competitive environment and um it was weird to be like have, talking to people you are friends with and kind of being like i don't know being in suddenly a competitive state. So another thing attached to that was that, uh, this is 2016, uh, I got to, uh, they, there's like a, a, a gallery that has a um, stu studios attached to it. And you like stay there for a couple months and uh, they also give you passes, like a, I forget it was like a card that allows you entry into a bunch of museums. And so this was one museum for communication Berlin. <laughs> um, and then I was doing a lot of like eating unusual snacks. I was drinking a lot of Schwip Schwab, which is like a, it's like Coke, but it has orange in it. To my understanding, this was related to like World War II. They couldn't get like the straight up Coke mixture. So they mixed it with orange to like prolong the, uh, the drink. So, Cause uh, I think it was straight up only Germany uh, because uh, there's like Polish stores near me, and this is the thing where I don't, I don't, I feel weird asking Polish, you know, in a, in a Polish store, just suddenly entering, asking questions about soda pops. But uh, I haven't seen this in uh, in the Polish store, so I, I I assume this is a straight up German thing. Oh, this is cool. Uh, I was walking a lot. I was going to uh, weird malls. Weird malls. Uh, I went to this mall called the Sony Center a lot. So eventually, uh, I came back to the U.S. and was doing a lot of. Uh, this is my older reel, which I haven't updated. It's still technically not updated. Um, this is seven. This is seven years ago. So 2016, um, I was doing like some not, uh, what do you say, not well-paying freelance work. I, uh, I had some money from the, the award that I was talking about. Um, and then I was looking for a job and I worked at this place. So I didn't get all the slides. I worked at this place called Idea Machine. I don't even know what they're doing right now, dude. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know anybody I, I used to, uh, work with still works there that I know still works there. So uh, this is actually a video that I, uh, I did. So I was there as an artist and the things were going, the, they were actually doing what I understood to be really well for a long time. It felt like even when I started there, um, I think it had to be 2016 because I remember, was I there when the election happened? I think I was there when the election happened. Or something, I remember something political and depressing happened. So this dude, the person who owns this company, he bought whiteboardanimation.com. So if you're not familiar, whiteboard animation is like, I, I, I consider it barely creative, right? It's this thing where you're, it feels like you're you're using your degree. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm making an animation. It's an animation. Dude. Let's actually like try to find one I did. I'm using my degree to make an animation, right? I'm drawing, I'm making drawings. The drawings, this is one I, I wasn't, I didn't draw, but I was an art director or a creative director. Uh, right, you're like, uh, the drawings look cool. Uh, sometimes this was one that had a higher budget. So it was like saying, oh, can you add, we have some time. Can you add a cool little animation to this or add some stuff to, uh, some frames to this flag that was like oh we got some yeah i remember this like somebody did this thing and i was like Woo -wee! Woo -wee! we got some budget we got some parallax we got some parallax budget uh anyway so the, the point of whiteboard animation is i don't know was it rga rga animation they did it in real life right where they would at least uh, I think these are still in reality, right? This is, looks like a real video where they have somebody talking about a topic and then they have what looks like a person with a, or in this case it actually is, a, um, a person drawing 
different aspects of what is being discussed. So because it's a whiteboard, you can add stuff, you can remove stuff, right? You can add, you can layer stuff in this way. Uh, but, and then I think usually the thing you're trying to do is like zoom out to a, whoa, it's a big ass drawing. And that's supposed to be, I don't know, uh, the first, you know, this one was weirdly, that was kind of unimpressive, that ending. But whichever the first one was that this is RGA, is my understanding is this is like the first person who, the first place that did this thing. And it became wildly popular. I remember even in, there was a place I was working in like 2012, and they were doing whiteboard animations. I remember even at that point being like, people still want this stuff? And then, so I was working in this place in 2017. Uh, people uh, were still asking for this stuff, apparently. Um, I don't know what's going on now. If there's some, I don't know, there's uh, AI going on with this. I don't know, dude. I know that there are programs that can do it, what they purport to be automatically, but they're like really bad. So this place did what I think is, so these are digital, obviously. They're not really uh, drawing on a whiteboard. This is probably the most efficient i don't know if there's a way without artificial intelligence or something like this or uh artificial intelligence or some other program or i don't know i don't know a more efficient way to do that i think maybe the only thing is if you have a bunch of stuff like you draw i don't know hundreds of characters and hundreds of permutations or you have some like preset person shape that you can apply what I would, they, they also filmed a bunch of hands, right? They had hands of, there was like a female presenting hand, there's hands of color, um, there was hands with like different pens, types of pens, right? Uh, but this was, this is the subtle thing that I think uh, uh, actually most people don't care about, but you can see it's, the hand is kind of changing, right? It's, it's not like a video of a hand, it's like just like uh, several still photographs to appear to be writing. And, you just add some, you, you add a little bit of rotation. The, the thing that they did was, that I actually didn't figure out, was uh, the thing you do is you, you want to, you draw this stuff. So the, the, the marker's drawing on this stuff, this guy, and our strategy in the building. And you have to create a mask, right? And then the mask reveals those elements, right? Or what you know, whichever order you need to do for that. So the, the kind of genius thing that I don't know who figured this out. Maybe this was like a tutorial that I didn't think to look up or find. Um, you you go in flash, and then super quick you just take this is the thing I want to mask off, right? Super quick you just like um, draw in the mask, right? Frame by frame, and then you have this swift that's like of the mask getting created, and uh, and then you. I don't know if because you can kind of go super quick frame by frame and flash or animate what's called animate now. And then you can, uh, then you just like move, you roto the hand so that it appears like it's being, the elements are being drawn on. I don't know a faster way to do it unless there's some way to specify the point of the hand in the swift somehow and programmatically attach this so then you wouldn't have to roto it. But really, I don't know, honestly, like this work was kind of spiritually unfulfilling. There was a time when it's like, okay, everything's done. I'm going to add the hands in now. Uh, when I was an artist there, that was, um, that part was pretty relaxing. Or you could just say like, kind of have a few, you know, listen to a podcast or something and kind of like turn your brain off and you're not trying to like solve a creative issue of like, how do I draw this thing? How do I figure out this keyframe thing? That part was was not terrible. So things were super chill for a while, a long time at this company. Um, they were growing, and then the guy who owned it decided because he's from New Jersey that he's going to move the studio from downtown Brooklyn, which was like a super cool location, like near. Uh, it was near Decab Market. They would buy when things were going well. They would buy tickets to uh, movies on Fridays, or. Uh, for like the premiere week of like, I think Infinity War they paid for, um, the Alamo, which is super, it's super chill. I don't know, uh, it's a super, if you've never been to an Alamo, it's it's cool, you can, there's not pictures of the theater, but uh, yeah, here. So, uh, I don't know, they, they have like nice seats, uh, they have food, so it's just, it's just a nice theater. 
So they moved to not, um, I don't know, something like Jersey City or Hoboken where people could get to by the path or something like this. They moved to Union City, New Jersey. So a lot of people were not cool with that. And a lot of people started to leave and also it felt like because a lot of people had been there kind of since the beginning and they felt overlooked, like they weren't able to grow with the company. Um, and uh, at this point, I got promoted to something called, it was like producer, something like this. It was like I was an artist and then I was a producer and then I got a role like creative director. These were kind of fake titles. Basically, um, there was like versions of artist that they used to justify different people's pay or rates. And then there was art director, which was basically a slightly higher paid artist. And maybe sometimes you get a little bit more input on the creative process. And then there was like producer, which is basically just your, your creative director, but you're working on not great projects with small budgets. And then creative director was like, you're actually, you're, you get to manage a bigger project. So my goal was to be a creative director and then probably animation creative director median salary. Uh, this is saying average 169. That's awesome. Dude. <laughs> right, so I was not making that. Um, this place was being, I, don't, I remember being like, most of the, the job boards I was looking at were like, maybe this is like, I don't know what companies is based on. The jobs I was looking at were like 80K, uh, and that's kind of like what I was hoping for. I was hoping I could keep the title and make the jump to somewhere making like 80K. I was making like 60. There was a period of time I was paying New York and New Jersey tax, which was like not fun. However, let's see how far back this goes. Um, however, uh, one my friend also from Cranbrook, Kelsey Elder, actually, Uh, he's at, he and his wife are in, uh, Carnegie Mellon. Now, um, so what am I saying? Sorry. He was at per SUNY Purchase College and he got an offer at, to go to RISD. So he kind of recommended me for a position at, at, at Purchase and I thought that seems like a cool, I know, something I was interested in doing and the pay was comparable. I think that's actually a public record if you look up like a visiting assistant professor or assistant professor at SUNY Purchase. It's comparable to what I was making at uh, this other job. So I thought, great. And it was very intimidating. I was teaching graphic design. Uh, it was very intimidating at first. I didn't have this website at first. Uh, I started at the end of the semester. And uh, so this was... So we're jumping forward to, I had this job at Idea Machine like 2017 or 2016 to 2019. So I started teaching, uh, it doesn't even say, oh, here we go. I started teaching fall 2019, which was very disorienting. Um, it was a lot, dude. It was a lot. <clears throat> um, and I felt like I kind of had things, I felt like spring, you know, 2020, this spring, I got things together. Uh, I'm teaching some different classes, but I'm teaching this class called Design Issues. I was teaching a class called uh, Typographic Investigations. It's like an intro to type design class, which is uh, use that program I mentioned called Glyphs, right? I was thinking this semester is going to be good. Or, and then I think it was still oh, designed for web and screen stuff, right? And I was thinking things are going to be great. Dude. And then COVID happens. COVID. Uh, uh, it, it was, I don't know, dude. I, 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 you were teaching for, this is, I don't know, uh, other, other departments probably were a different thing, but this is like four hour classes, four hour classes where you're, um, you're on Zoom for four hours, right? Um, supposedly I did what people would characterize as a good job adapting to that. However, I don't, I don't think there is a good way to adapt to that, right? And then, uh, so then things started to come out of uh, pandemic, but it was still like, it was rough, dude. It was rough, and I think this is something that, for which there will be long-ranging effects. By, what, by that, what do I mean? Um, 
I was talking to some students who are now going to be seniors. They were sophomores. And I remember talking to them and saying, hey, it's cool that you've not had any time at this college where you were on Zoom. And they were like, oh, yeah, but our junior and senior years of high school were on Zoom. And then I remember thinking, realizing COVID will affect education for, you know, 18 to 20 years or something. It's, it's not going to go away. And uh, I, I haven't done scientific research into, what is it called, iPad children brain or scooby toilet brain or whatever. I don't know, dude. There's no way that it does not affect things. So uh, I, I was doing, this is 2019 and I'm still teaching there now. Part of the motivation for posting here again was they have a thing called Junior Faculty Development Leave Awards. And uh, this is just on the public internet. I got one. Shout out to, uh, the only person I know is Mariana. Shout out to Mariana. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean not shout out to other people, but Mariana's great. So I got one, so this means, what does this mean? The entire fall semester, I, I, I will talk about the actual project in another video, but you propose a project and then you get a semester to work on the project and they pay you. And they pay you, which is uh, intense. So I, I have time in theory to, to post on YouTube again. And the thing I wanted to relate to this project is to post um, updates about that project. And it would be cool if I can get to talk to some people, like interview style, on here. So other things that happened. This was 2021 we're talking about. We, we took a Disney cruise as things were, as in my partner, as things were coming out of the pandemic. We got engaged. This is, I had a bit more money at this time. But it was it was cool. I mean, it wasn't it's wasn't fun to be messed up in a lot of places. But there weren't a lot of kids on this trip. I think this was like uh, we got engaged. It was uh, cool, and then we got I'm married, dude. I'm married. Man. Um, so I think I can't play the audio from this, but. So this was last year, 2022. This is big life thing number one. It's if you're, it's the dreams. What? No, it's dreams by the cranberries. Um, sorry, there's cool stuff in this room right here. That was, uh, and getting married was kind of like, what's the term like? Am I using this right? Fait complete. Fait complete is a French phrase commonly used to describe an action that's completed before those affected by it are in a position or query to reverse it. Kind of. So, so what I'm saying is this: this is a thing where you know there was pressure to familial pressure, uh, or it was a thing where it's like uh, I I wanted to do it and I, I had some kind of illusion that I needed more money to do. It. Uh, but things were in a good position fiscally at this time anyway. Um, that I, that we, you know, it was, we were engaged. The, 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 the other thing is to, uh, having a child, uh, having a child in, the child is due in August. It's the end of May. This moment, dude, this was like, I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, I, I joke that this made me feel like uh, this is the first time I felt like uh, pro-life before. Like I was like, dude, we gotta defend this guy. Uh, I'm kidding, but it was the first time I felt this feeling of like, dude, how do how, uh, we gotta get we gotta treat this dude right? Anyway, so that's happening in August. So I'm gonna be. It was coincidental timing with this uh, junior faculty development leave award. I, we, I have the summer and then uh, I have the summer and then the fall semester. So I have June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Uh, I'm going to be posted on here. Uh, I assume things will be a different level of chaotic once I, we have the child. I'm actually looking at We just, uh, we sold a treadmill this weekend. I had to help two people carry pieces of a treadmill out the door in a railroad department, which was like, it was really awkward. It was fine. It was fine. I mean, ultimately it was fine. It was just one of those things where it's like, 
you're scared somehow you're gonna be like let's reverse the decision and also there was a lot of dangerous material like pet dander and just like dust under the treadmill it was kind of embarrassing so we move that and then I'm moving a bunch of stuff we're trying to move the the broom that I'm looking at in this direction is gonna be uh, the baby's room and uh, we're, we're in the process of moving stuff around and receiving things from from we got a a uh, snoo. Uh, we're getting stuff from the, the for the baby shower. It's like uh, it's ex- things. The quickening is happening. It's quickening. Um, so that was the thing. We we what did we look at? We looked at um, big life things and little programs. Closing all my windows. Uh, goodbye. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>